Sleep Consulting, and she's here to discuss the top tips for traveling during the holidays. Good morning to you, Annie. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes, thanks so much for being here this morning. So you say to abide by the 80-20 rule. Can you kind of explain to me what that is? Right. So everything in life should be 80-20. Like 80% 80 of the time you're consistent, 20% of the time life happens. And travel is unfortunately one of those 20% times that I say we're going to do the best we can, but I have some tips and tricks for people when you're traveling, whether it's just yourself or with your kids. Yeah, and so you, one of the tips that you kind of threw out, threw out was making your temporary sleeping arrangements as similar as you can to home. So kind of, you said, by start by making sure the room is dark. Yes, yes. So that would be probably the the number one thing that I would recommend if you're staying at a hotel or you're staying with family members, kind of figure out where you're going to be and then just be prepared. So I always have in my suitcase packed along um, some safety pins and some 3M tape and some black electrical tape that's in my suitcase at all times. So that way, any of the little light pollution things that are within a hotel room, you can cover up or the, the curtains, you can safety pin them together or 3M tape them against the wall to make it nice and dark in there. Um, you know, covering up the, the light from the microwave. And sometimes even I go as far, I'm kind of a sleep snob, so I will go as far as putting black tape over the um, smoke detectors. <laughs> I can't say that's always the safest option, but I do it for myself anyway. That's um, a, and I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Annie. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so then the other thing that I recommend if you're staying with family is to maybe get um, some of the portable blackout curtains that were kind of shown on that last graphic there. So the Tommy Tippy ones are like these little suction cups and they can unfold and you can suction cup them right onto a window to make it nice and dark in the environment. Oh, wow. So can you just get those on Amazon or where would you find yep. those? Yep, you can get those on Amazon. I think Target might sell them as well. Wow. And then if you have littles and they are in a pack and play or a mini crib, my favorite all-time sleep product is called the slumber pro the ooh, sorry the slumber pod. It's like this little tent that goes over top of the pack and play, and you can zip it shut, so it's a nice dark environment for your kiddos. And it's nice because when you travel, like let's say in a hotel here that I was at, we just stuck it in the corner right over top of the pack and play, and your kid just gets so used to sleeping in something like that that any environment that you're in, they're just used to their little tent, their little pod. And inside of there, there's like this little pouch that also has um, a holder for a monitor. So if you put a little monitor in there, you can still see them quite easily. Oh, those are amazing things. My brothers and sister, they all have lots of kids and we always had to be so careful going into the hotel room at night because you turn on one light and that kid is gonna wake up and then it's another yeah. 45 minutes trying to get him to calm down again. That is like the number one solution. It has worked fantastic for my own daughter. I have a one-year-old right now and I swear by it. It is amazing. That so is wonderful. if you're looking to gift somebody that, that would be a wonderful <laughs> Christmas gift. But if you are a parent, I would recommend ordering it now. So that way you can start practicing for naps at home. And then that way, by the time Thanksgiving or Christmas rolls around, you're just ready to go. That's an amazing tip. That's a great idea. And you also say noise machines are good uh, to keep oh, on hand. Absolutely. Portable noise machines. Um, I have several different kinds. I'd say the Yoga Sleep, I think this one, what's it called? Hot Moon Omni, um, whatever you can find that's a portable noise machine, bring one of those. Again, we have one pretty much in every one of our suitcases and make sure you have the charging cord for them as well. We just wanna make sure we can block out all of the environmental sounds that are in hotels or at auntie's house, things like that. Yeah, and so would you recommend would you recommend the sleep the noise machines that are on your cell phone, just like the apps that you can download or does the light from the cell phone kind of uh, take away um, any benefits from the white noise machine? I'd say for adults, absolutely, you can use the apps for those. Mm -hmm. um, but for kiddos, obviously, you don't want to leave your phone in the room for the kids. So I usually recommend that you'd have some kind of a portable noise machine that you bring with for them. Excellent. And you also say, remember to bring teddy bears, blankets, um, and also travel monitors for, for the kids. Yes, absolutely. And you want, like when I tell people they're, they're picking out their lovies for kids, you want them tiny so that they can fit easily in the diaper bag. You just want to make it comfortable just like at home. So anything you can bring that's going to make it feel like them, that smell like home, anything like that, we're going to, we're going to add into our suitcase. Excellent. So what about uh, sleeping aids like uh, melatonin pills uh, versus uh, things like chamomile tea at night? Do those things help or are those things that you should keep in your travel suitcases as well? Yeah. So I think that anytime that you're traveling, over many time zones, melatonin is a great option to have. 
Um, and I usually recommend that if you're going to do melatonin, you do a sublingual kind, the kind that you can like a liquid that you can put underneath your tongue or the sprays because it absorbs faster and less gets absorbed into your like intestines and throughout your digestive system. So, but I would only recommend that if you're going to use light therapy as well with your melatonin. Um, but otherwise chamomile tea is great. I usually will pack some chamomile tea packets in my suitcase as well to just have that because it can have a nice sedative property in it. So that I would recommend that over the melatonin if possible. Interesting. So you kind of mentioned uh, changing time zones, and that kind of got me thinking, you know, do you try to stick to your original time zone when you're traveling, or do you kind of move with the time zone as you, as you travel? Right. So this is a really tough question, and it kind of depends on the situation. Um, usually, like if you're only traveling for a really short time, I'd say try and stick with your, your normal schedule. If you are traveling though for a long time and you are traveling – um, like across your international travel, there is an app called Time Shifter that I would recommend anybody utilize because it helps you then determine what time you should be exposed to light, when you should have caffeine, when you should eat, when you should exercise, when you should really focus on darkness. And it helps you kind of um, adjust your circadian rhythm to the destination at hand. I used it when I went to Indonesia. And again, traveling west was way easier for me, but then coming home and coming back east was killer. It was brutal. And that is actually a situation where I definitely use some melatonin for a couple of days to help my system reset. Absolutely. And you mentioned the time shift app. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more about, about that app and how it can help us uh, with travel? Right. So it, it kind of, like I said, um, light is the number one thing that helps us regulate our circadian rhythm. So if we do things like melatonin or try to adjust, like adjust when we're going to eat or exercise, none of that really matters unless you are getting the right proper exposure to light. And so that um, you will plug in your flight information, what time you're going to land, um, and it will calculate everything. And it kind of just gives you this daily schedule from this time to this time. I want you exposed to light. And from this time to this time, you're going to really focus on darkness. So maybe on the plane, you're going to bring that sleep mask with you. Um, it kind of lets you know what time frames you should be having caffeine. Um, it, it's amazing. It's fantastic. The science that goes behind it, like they've used it with NASA astronauts and lots of um, professional athletes who travel internationally. Yeah, that's so interesting. My eyes changed my alarm clock from just using the alarm on my cell phone to an alarm clock that wakes me up with light. And I think the benefits of that, like I wake up in a much better mood and it's, it has made wake up times, especially getting up as early as we do here, uh, yes. so much better. So it is very interesting, um, the, the effects of light therapy. Right. The dawn simulating alarm clocks are amazing, especially right now, like with it being so dark now, I'd recommend that for everybody. Go check one out if Absolutely. you can. Absolutely. And then very quickly, we have about a, less than a minute here. Uh, yeah. You kind of, we kind of talked about nap times. Is it better to skip nap times? Uh, you know, go in with the 80-20 rule or should we try to stick to those schedules for kids? For kids, it kind of depends. If they're really young and they are like under I'd say nine months old, you want to focus more on their wake window for the naps that they're going to be having. Um, you're really going to focus on that, I'd say, until kids are a little older. And then you're going to try really hard and just adjust to the time zone that you're in. Um, sometimes that means a little bit earlier for bedtime, and sometimes it means a little bit later. I really do work a lot with my clients and kind of specifically try to figure that out for them if they have like a big trip coming up. Yes, absolutely. So we're about out of time here, Annie. Um, where can we find more information or how can we get in touch with you if we have more questions or, or need more help with our sleep schedules? Sure. If you just check out my website at zensleepconsulting.com, you can pretty easily book um, a call for any of my services or a micro consult there. Otherwise, I'm pretty active on Instagram. Wonderful. Well, Annie Schleck, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure having you and preparing us for the upcoming travel season. Absolutely. Thank you.